Throne of Liberty is a visually stunning game and has mass PvP fights with thousands of players. And of course everyone wants to have high and stable FPS here. Whether you are on a high end gaming PC aiming for stable FPS on max settings or you are working with an older system and want to squeeze every last frame out of it. This video is then exactly for you. Today I will show you how to maximize your FPS in 5 simple steps. So that you have even when thousands of players are on the screen still enough and stable FPS. Even if you don't have access to Throne of Liberty right now, you can still complete all of the steps except for the first one. So you are ready to go with the maximum FPS on day 1. And with that welcome to our 8th episode of our Throne of Liberty starter series. Step 1. Optimizing in-game settings. So let's dive into the settings and look how to gain FPS without just lowering the overall graphic settings. No matter what PC you have, the first thing you should always do is disable the armor toys of other players. Armor toys are these little followers that every player has with them 24-7. While they may look cool, they unnecessarily consume a lot of performance. To turn this off, go to Gameplay, Content and uncheck Show Others Armatory. Next head over to Graphics, Quality, scroll down and uncheck Hair Strands. Yes, this makes the hair look a little bit nicer, but the difference isn't massive. And this will bring you up to 30 FPS during large scale PvP battles. It's really crazy how much performance this little tweak can give you. Another important aspect to use whenever possible is the concept of upscaling, also known as super resolution or AI driven upscaling or however you want to call it. If you have an Nvidia card, you will see the options for Nvidia DLSS. I personally used the quality setting with frame generation checked. This almost doubled my FPS with minimal visual loss. Do you see any differences? If you have an AMD card, just experiment with AMD FSR2 and find what works the best for you. But you 100% should use it in some way. For siege battles where thousands of players are involved, you can also switch to ultra performance. But just be aware that it really heavy reduces the quality and for me it didn't give too many FPS. Ok, if you need to lower your settings further, always start with ambient occlusion and shadow quality. These two settings are heavy on resources and when you reduce them they can give you always a good FPS boost. So for example when you go into sieges you can just simply put both of these values to low and after the sieges you put them back up. The last tweak you can do to heavily increase your FPS for content with a lot of players is to show only the animations from your character and disable all other animations from all other players. So you still see the animations directly targeting you, which is crucial for PvP of course, but all other animations from all other players will be hidden. This setting can be found under Gameplay, Character and here you find a drop down menu to choose only show my animations. For me that takes a lot from the game's atmosphere. But it provides a crazy FPS increase in large scale PvP fights. These in game settings are the most important to know when it comes to maximizing your FPS without just lowering all the graphic settings. Ok that's all for step 1. Now all the other steps will now not only boost your FPS in Throne and Liberty, but also in all other games. Maybe you were always too lazy to optimize your PC, now it's the time. So let's come to our second step, the optimization of our GPU. Of course always ensure your GPU drivers are up to date. Pretty basic, but still please just do it. Just do it! Then we need to optimize our driver settings. So I am sadly only experienced with Nvidia cards. So if you have an AMD card, I sadly can't help you here with full confidence. But I linked you a guide in the video description on how to optimize your driver settings for an AMD card. If you are using an Nvidia card, head to the Nvidia control panel. Press Windows, type Nvidia control panel and open it. All of these settings I'm showing you are tested through different sieges and other mass PvP content and will give you better and more stable FPS and Throne and Liberty. So first click on adjust image settings with preview, select use the advanced 3D image settings and hit apply. Then go to the manage 3D seconds tab. Here we have now plenty of options which can all bring more and stable FPS. Here you see my recommendation. Feel free to pause the video here and add all into your Nvidia control panel. If you're interested in what all these changes are doing, you will find plenty of videos on YouTube explaining that. That would be way too much for this video now. Finally, go to the configure surround physics tab and change the physics settings from automatic to your graphics card and hit apply. Boom, your GPU is now optimized and ready to go. Just a quick reminder, if you like the video and want to support me, don't forget to subscribe, like and do all this cool stuff. 
Now let's come to step 3, CPU optimization. For this, we are using the best free tool available, Process Lasso. Process Lasso is a tool that optimizes your gaming PC by managing how your games uses the CPU, ensuring smoother gameplay and better performance. In addition to the optimization of the CPU usage, Process Lasso dynamically adjusts process priorities, balances workloads across the CPU cores and much more. You can find the download link in the video description. Once installed, click on Main. Here make sure that Manage Process of all users and Pro Balance is turned on. Now go to the Active Power Profile and change it to Max Performance Overlay. For some reason Lasso is displaying me this in German, but it should be called something like Max Performance Overlay or something similar. One last thing we have to double check here. So click on Options, CPU, Pro Balance and make sure that Enable Pro Balance is enabled. Usually that should be by default. but. For for some reason I saw it already be not activated by default. So just make sure that it's activated. These were now all just settings which count for all of the games you are playing. The next steps are game specific, but you can always follow the exact same steps which we are doing now here for TL. First start now Throne and Liberty. With Throne and Liberty running in the background, search for TL in the process lasso search bar. Right click on it, go to CPU priority always and set it to high. Then go to IO priority, always and set it also to high. Now, next what I like to change is to turn off hyperthreading. So your CPU has some actual physical cores and some virtual cores. The virtual cores are usually weaker than the actual physical cores. If you turn off hyperthreading, it stops using all the virtual CPU cores and forces your PC to use the actual cores when playing Throne and Liberty. This depends of course a little on the system, but me with an AMD CPU have seen here crazy FPS boost disabling it. For that you click on CPU Affinity always and disable SMT for AMD CPUs and disable hyperthreading for Intel CPUs. From what I've heard, hyperthreading is generally working better on Intel cores, but if I were you, I would just turn it on and off and benchmark myself how I get more FPS and Throne and Liberty. One last thing I also like to change here is to disable Core 0, because usually this is the core where all of your standard processes are running. So it's better that your game is not running on that core. And that's it, this you can use also for all of your other games as well. It really depends you on the game, but this can really boost your FPS. So we optimized our GPU and our CPU. And in the four steps we should optimize our RAM. When it comes to RAM nowadays, the most important thing is to make sure that the XMP from your RAM is activated. XMP stands for Extreme Memory Profile. It's an easy and super safe way to overclock your RAM. Otherwise your RAM might be not running on the speed that it's capable of. And Throne of Liberty is a super RAM heavy game, so you really don't want to skip this step just make sure that it's activated. This we have to do in the BIOS. But since each motherboard has a different looking BIOS and a different way of enabling it, I can only give you the steps on how to find a way to enable it. So what I would do is first find out if our RAM has an XMP profile. For this simply go to ChatGPT and ask him if your RAM has it. For me personally that's just the fastest and easiest way. You can of course also just google it. Then just go to YouTube, type the name of your motherboard and add XMP. 99% chance that you will find here a guide on how to activate XMP on your motherboard. And don't you worry that are just two simple clicks in the BIOS. This is something you really should do. In Throne of Liberty you will get here massive performance increases because the game is so RAM heavy. Okay, let's come to the last step. For that we have to stay in our BIOS. And here we have to check if resizable bar is activated. So resizable bar allows your CPU to access all of the graphic card's memory at once, instead of small chunks. This is a huge feature. Not all systems benefit the same way from it, but it's something that should be always activated. And most of the time, this is by default not the case. So again, go to YouTube, type the name of the motherboard and add resizable bar. Here you go, again you will find a guide how to activate it on your mainboard. It just costs some clicks and will give you again some additional FPS on all of your games. And there you have it, 5 simple steps to maximize your FPS in Throne and Liberty. While there are more advanced optimizations you can do, these steps are a great starting point and have given me a significant FPS boost. If you have any other additional tips or tricks, feel free to share them in the comment section. If you want to learn more about Throne and Liberty, this is just one part of the Throne and Liberty starter series. In this series you will learn all the fundamentals to be ready when the global release hits. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe and see ya in the next one.